Hello and welcome. What we're going to be looking in this video is we're going to be looking at critical thinking and really just the basics of how to think critically about texts, ideas, uh, anything to do with English and interpretation. And basically that process of not just using critical thinking but using those skills of interpretation, finding evidence, evaluation, all those things. Basically, you'd be looking at thinking for yourself. And that's really what is at the heart of critical thinking and just asking lots of questions. So basically, critical thinking is asking questions and looking for answers to those questions. It's about you being inquisitive. So what you need to do is you need to constantly ask yourself questions. Well, why? Why is that so? Now, to do that to your teacher might annoy them a little bit. So this is something you can just do inside your own head. And basically, just think about trying to ask yourself lots and lots of questions when you're doing things in English. So it requires basically four processes. First of all, it requires your own interpretation, which is basically your own ability to ask yourself questions and be able to answer them yourself. So without necessarily having an English um, exam or, or test to question you on things, to, to basically not write your own questions, but to ask yourself your own questions about what does this mean? What does that mean? How does that relate? What do I feel? What do I think about this? It requires you to analyze it. So work out, okay, why do I think that way? What about this interpretation has made me think that way? And then go into developing that. The third part is basically your evidence to back up what it is you're, you're criticizing and what it is you're saying. So basically just to go through, once you've, you've thought about it and you've worked out why, you need to figure out, okay, what in that text or what about that idea makes me think those two things. And the final process is to evaluate and reflect upon it to actually go, okay, is that the best way to look at it? Now, critical thinking is a border studies outcome. It is something that you're required to do. So thinking for yourself, thinking about every text that you read, thinking and asking yourself questions independently without having to be asked to, is essentially one of the things that you should be able to do going into any senior uh, English lesson. And basically, it requires all those things. So if you don't have that process going on in your head as you're reading text and, and you're answering questions, then it's something that you need to sort of start trying to do. Now, it's, it's hard at first. It's not an easy thing to do first up. But <clears throat> with practice and with asking yourself questions that you would ask about anything, you think of a child and how they ask why about everything. You need to be that little child again. You need to channel that little child inside yourself that constantly asks questions about the world and do so in such a way that you're asking yourself questions about your, the books, the films that you watch, all those things, and just go, even it's a case of how did they do that? Why did they do that? That seems strange. That seems odd. Why? And it's a process that does take a lot of practice, but once you've mastered it, it's really a simple process for getting really good at English. And we'll go through some of the aspects of critical thinking in this video, and basically allow you to develop those own skills and it's something you have to do yourself these are skills you can't really instruct the person to do these are things that you basically just have to take in and then just attempt to do yourself so it's something that you have to do at home it's something you have to do independently it's not something you can really be asked to do so just something that to, to keep in mind when you're looking at this all right now the mental process basically as i said before it requires you to think for yourself it requires you to be open-minded. So it, asks you, it requires you not to just assume things. It requires you to actually go through and just make sure that what you think is true. And there are lots of examples, particularly urban legends and myths, and all these other things that you have heard from other people, which are some of which are true, but some, a lot of which aren't true, and require you to be open-minded in order to come up with a correct answer or come up with one that makes more sense next thing it requires you to do is to answer basically everything with who, what, when, where, why, and how. Now, I know you'd be probably well and truly familiar with those terms by now, but something you need to do to yourself constantly. And yes, it is really irritating to do the first time around, but once you get used to it, it's not quite as irritating anymore. It requires you to do inquiry and research. So basically, you're inquiring and you're researching everything it is that you're basically uh, doing. So you 
if you need to find out more, you go off and look for it. If you need to find more in, and it doesn't necessarily mean you go on Google and learn everything you can about a text. Sometimes inquiry just means actually going through the text itself and picking out things and trying to see if there's something that will give you an indication about why this is the case. And the research will help you particularly with things like understanding context. And finally, it requires you to justify. This is the most important bit, every criticism you make. So one thing is to think for yourself and have your own opinion, which is great. But when you're writing about your opinion, you can't just use it on its own. You need to actually justify it with some sort of evidence, with some sort of reasoning, with some sort of idea which can be accepted by another person beyond which, well, basically beyond the point where I'm saying, well, it's just your opinion, prove it. So justification is a, pretty much the important and the concluding step to this entire thought process is being able to find something that proves what it is you're trying to say. And that's essentially it. So it requires that process in your head. And as I said, this is something you can't really instruct someone to do. This is something that you basically have to uh, understand, know what this process is. And as I said, it's as simple as asking yourself questions and to ask yourself questions about all the things in the world, to be curious, to not just accept things. And to do that whenever you attempt any lesson, really. It's not just English. It's for every subject that you do. So... Think about, now, yes, it requires you to take an interest in your studies, but if you're taking an interest in your study, you're actually making them much easier on yourself, and particularly if you can find things that you can make interesting about your English studies, it actually becomes a far more interesting subject than what it might otherwise be if you're just accepting everything, because otherwise you'd be just listening to other people, not really finding things out for yourself, which is a lot more interesting. Now, interpretation. Let's just go for that word. Interpretation requires you to look at a text or topic and basically in the way that you understand it. So not just accepting someone else's interpretation and say, well, this is true because they said this, but actually going through it yourself and going, do I agree with that? Or even if you do, why you agree with it? So to, that's that process of basically asking you who, what, when, where, why, and how questions. Read it, a text or, or examine a text in isolation. Now, basically what that means is when you get a text, if you get a film or whatever it is, which you're required to study, or if you're given any kind of stimulus or any type of question, before you ask someone else how you answer the question, just try and attempt to answer it yourself first. Now, if you don't understand the question, then research, find keywords, find ways that you can answer, understand the question yourself first before you go off and ask someone else. And particularly, Work on some ways of actually just going through a text, even if you don't understand it, but work out ways that you can understand little bits of it. Now, the hardest part of particularly doing texts like Shakespeare or Romanticist poetry and those sorts of things is that they do require you to do a little lead work and actually think for yourself about them. That they're not things which literally tell you the answer. They are ones, or literally tell you what's going on. They are ones which allow you to use your imagination to fill in the gaps between each line. And that's one of the things that a lot of people find really, really tough is to have the imagination to fill in those gaps. So the best way to, to, to stimulate that imagination is to ask those sorts of questions and to be able to actually ask, okay, what does that mean? Why do they say that? And then come up with some answers, even if they're stupid answers. It doesn't matter. There's no stupid ideas in brainstorming. So use that process and use it over again. So then record the answers which you use for your analysis. So, for instance, if I say, why a red light? Why is there a red light in the story? I can say, well, I think it might show danger. In which case, you change it when you're answering it to, I think it shows danger, or it shows danger. All right, because you want to sound convinced when you're writing it as an answer. But to start with, you can just say, oh, I think danger. Okay, there you go. It's an answer. We'll stick to it. Now, analysis actually requires you to take these answers and work out why you think that's correct. Now, we're not quite at the proving process yet, but we're working out why these ideas are correct. Now, first thing you need to think about is your text and its context, as in not only the idea, but everything that surrounds it. So not only everything within that text itself. So if you see something in one section of the text, so in this, in this case, if you see a red light, first thing you've got to do is try and work out, okay, what's it meaning in relationship to this scene, if it's a film? What does it mean in relation to the entire text? 
what does it mean in terms of what the author might have been trying to do when he, he or she wrote it or put it together? What does it mean now if we see a red light in real life? Ask yourself all of these questions. There's tons of questions. There's a litany of questions. And then you can actually start to build up an analysis and a discussion of the sorts of ideas which go into that particular object that you've just talked about. So, for instance, the text is trying to create danger. A red light would do that. Okay, so I've seen lots of examples, for instance, on police sirens and those sorts of things and that and through the context of danger in a text, it seems to indicate that a red light is something that people associated with danger. And so for that reason, basically a red light symbolizes danger. Alright, next thing is finding reason and evidence. So like this little inquisitive fella over here is doing, basically doing some inquiry and research which is basically the main part of this process. Now, if your judgment is based on your interpretation only, it's about basically finding examples in the text to discuss and evaluate what is your own understanding of that. So basically, a red light is a symbol repeated throughout the text to signify dangerous social actions of the character. So now we're going into a little bit more depth. We're blending those two ideas together, so we've got the discussion and the evidence basically linked which is that the red light is something that is used throughout, so in lots of locations, and it's constantly used whenever the main character is doing something that's dangerous for their social life. And now that is more of a composed and more of a critical interpretation of just the fact that there's lots of red lights around and that means something. So it's saying what it is, it's saying exactly what it's doing, and it's being very, very specific. So particularly when it says dangerous social actions. Okay, so it's putting into context and it's using that context effectively as to what it is that that red light actually means. Okay, so there's your interpretation. So it's basically something that you have come up with yourself, in this case because I'm writing it and it's something I've come up with, and then discuss and evaluate it based on what you understood of the text. Now, understanding is not universal. It's something that is something that different people do differently. So don't worry if it's something that your teacher doesn't necessarily agree with because you can still stick with it. It's not something that's set in concrete, provided that, of course, within the context of the text and the world around it, that it does make sense. All right, so that's the main thing there. All right, finally, the final process of this critical thought process is reflection. Now, the reason why you would use reflection, and I know it requires a little bit of extra work after you've handed everything in, but the thing about reflection is it basically allows you to see if your interpretation makes sense. And particularly, it's something you would do a lot when you're reviewing your work. Now, what you do when you're trying to see if you make sense is basically whether you can actually construct a response out of what I've just interpreted there. So if I've just interpreted that and the question is not really asking anything to do with the idea of danger, then I can't really use that because it doesn't really answer the question and there's no point for me having that interpretation in there. However, if it's saying how does it create suspense, well I can link danger to suspense. So I can use that as an argument and I can use that interpretation. So that interpretation there is useful. So that requires you basically to to check your own analysis, to basically go, okay, I can use that, that's great. So it could even be just basically checking that symbol itself. So could a red light mean something else? Is fear maybe a better fit than danger? Constantly go back and look over it again to make sure that what I've chosen is the best possible fit. As a, so it's, it's almost about seeing yourself some standards. So when you're um, writing something or when you are uh, composing any kind of response, you have some standards that you set yourself for your response. And what those standards are is basically, I want to do this, which is I want to compose a response in this particular fashion, and I want to make sure that I answer the question with an, an appropriate amount of detail. And I go into some deep ideas, and I go into some deep um, issues within the text. And this is what basically this reflection process allows you to do is go, okay, yes, I'm, I'm working hard at it. I am putting myself in a good position to get a really good, critical, well-analyzed, well-rounded response to the question. 
And that's basically all there is to the mental and thought process of critical thinking. Now just remember, it's something that you need to do yourself. So it's not something that anyone can really instruct you and remind you to do. It's just something that you just have to develop in your own mind. So ask yourself lots of questions. Ask yourself lots of questions to your friends, your family. Be inquisitive. Lot, try and learn as much as you can about different things. And by doing that, what you're doing is you're setting yourself up for not just success in English, but in anything else that you do. And particularly um, outside of schooling life, having an inquisitive mind and wanting to know more and doing your own research really does help you later on in life and particularly in the employment world. So it's something that's really, really useful to use and something that you really need to just focus on doing. So ask yourself lots of questions. Make sure that you do analyze them. You do give some sort of reason for them. And you can't really go wrong with the entire process of critical thinking. So that's basically it. Until next time, I'll see you later. Thank you.